in this demo, I'm going to show you what's Kyoto and uh, how we can use it inside a, an SPFX uh, web part. Very quick uh, about me. My name is Luis Mañez. Uh, I work as a chief architect at Clear People. I'm a Microsoft 65 development MVP and also a usual contributor in this amazing community. And you can find me in the usual social networks at uh, Luis Manez. So feel free to pin me with any question feedback. It's always good. And well, apologies in advance if the, you were expecting some kind of samurai or anything related with the Japanese culture. But the truth is that uh, Kyoto is a um, Swahili word and, and it means nest. But what's Kyoto exactly? Uh, well, Kyoto is a, a command line tool uh, that generates a client, an SDK, if you will, for any uh, API described using Open API. So the advantages are really clear because instead of you coding uh, your SDK for, for the API, your client for the API, um, you just run a command line and you're going to get it. And in, in in just a seconds, and even more, because if you need to provide different SDKs in different languages, uh, Kyoto got you covered as well, because currently support most of the well-known uh, languages like C Sharp, Java, TypeScript, and and so on. Everything is in the official documentation. Please note that it's still in in public preview, but as per my experience, um, it's very stable. And also, I'd say that even Microsoft is already using it for some of their uh, graph SDKs internally. So um, it looks pretty, pretty stable. And that's it. You, you just need to run this uh, command. There's a bunch of uh, different properties. Everything will document it. But uh, you can say Kyoto generate. You pass the open API of your API, the language you want to use, and also where to want, do you want to place the, the generated files, and that's all. Uh, by the way, if you don't know about open API, open API is uh, just a standard for describing an API. So a bunch of experts in development APIs gather together and create this um, a standard. And you can see an example in the in the slide, but you basically say, hey, this is the title of my API version, all these endpoints, my uh, HTTP bear for each endpoint, the response code, and the different objects uh, for input and output in the in the endpoints. Um, and yeah, this girl is um, the one and only uh, Gina Arenas, so uh, good for us is she's in there. OK, what we have in the in the sample and we're going to see in the demo is um, we have a custom API called Teamified API. It's secure by Azure Active Directory. And that API uh, calls uh, Microsoft Graph API to do some actions around the Teams endpoint. So um, you can get a list of the different teams in your tenant. And you can get um, detail of a specific team. And also, you can uh, provision a new team. And then we also have an SPFX web part that is going to use Kyoto generated client in TypeScript uh, to call that uh, API uh, really, really easy. Let's, let's have a, a quick look on how authentication works on, on Kyoto and, and Azure Active Directory. Uh, the API is secure by Azure Active Directory, so um, we need the Kyoto client to be able to get a token for calling the, the API. And to do so, uh, first we have the entry point. The entry point is the uh, client generated by, by Kyoto. There's a main class as an entry point. That class requires what is called a request adapter for all the networking operations. And the request adapter also needs an authentication provider and an access token provider. These are different packages in the in, in Kyoto, provided by Kyoto. Everything, by the way, is open source, so you can take a look to the, to the source code. And finally, the token provider is using the AAD token provider that is coming from SharePoint Framework. So the action to get the token is actually done by SharePoint Framework, by the SPFX using the AAD uh, token provider. The other classes from Kyoto, I 
kind of a wrapper and, and the action is done by the AAD token provider. OK, let's take a look uh, to the demo. So, well, uh, functionally, the, the web part is nothing too fancy, to be honest. I have already the, the web part running locally. So in the workbench, there's a team's list web part. And it's showing the different uh, teams in the tenant with title, description, picture, and uh, some of the uh, members of the, of the team. The interesting part is how we are calling the, the API using, using Kyoto. So let's take a look into this. This is uh, Visual Studio Code with the, with the sample. Everything is already in the GitHub repository, so you can take a look to the code. And I've already placed an open API JSON file. Um, this JSON file, by the way, has been generated using Swagger. I'm pretty sure you, you know Swagger uh, from the SP.NET. It's already uh, available in the, in the template when you create a new SP.NET uh, web project. And uh, using Swagger, I got this open API JSON file with the different endpoints, input, output, response, and the different and the different objects. And then we're gonna use Kyoto to generate the client. So I'm jumping into the console, and if we do something like Kyoto generate, we specify the open API. We are saying uh, we want TypeScript. And we also specify in the, the main class name, which is called Teamified API Client. And we want to place the generated files into the Kyoto generated folder. And if we do so, it's done. Um, so at this at this point, we've already generated the, the files, but also take a look that Kyoto is saying here, hey, if you want more info about the list of dependencies that you need to add to your project, you can write this Kyoto info command. So let's copy, paste. And what this is doing is telling you all the different dependencies. And in this case, as the language is TypeScript, uh, is getting you the npm install commands that you need to run into your, in this case, the SPFX uh, web part project. Uh, if you are using .NET, then you're going to get the .NET add package command when, with the different packages from, from Nuget, and I guess it, it was the same way with, the, with all the different support languages. I've already uh, moved the generated uh, code to, this, uh, to the SPFX uh, web part project, so we have the different packages in the, in the package JSON, Geot abstraction, authentication, and, and so on. And let's see now how we are using Kyoto inside the, the SPFX uh, web part. Instead of um, doing it from Visual Studio Code, let's jump in into the slides. This is just what we've seen. Well, uh, we're not going to go into much detail into the API. It's just a standard minimal uh, SP.NET API. Is secured by using uh, by Azure Active Directory with this with this code and configured to uh, be enabled to call graph um, on behalf of the of the user. These are the three endpoints provided by the API, as already mentioned. Get a list of the of the teams, a list of teams, a specific uh, uh, information for a specific team, and provision a, a team. And actually, the API is using the Microsoft Graph SDK, the .NET SDK. Uh, so everything is uh, done by the Graph Service Client. And uh, so here's the code for getting the different uh, teams of the tenant. And this is the code to uh, to provision a new a new teams, just using the the SDK. Okay, the important part is is now here in the SPFS web part. So this is the code from the from the web part itself, and the web part is uh, calling a teams list and uh, React component, and that component is getting as a prop the AAD token provider factory that it's already in the context in the SharePoint uh, web part context. Remember from the authentication slide that we're gonna need this AAD uh, token provider for authentication. So we need to pass the, the factory in this case that is already in the in the context. And when the web part uh, is mount, 
And what we are doing is uh, calling the token provider factory. And when the promise is resolved, and we already have a token provider, an IAD uh, token provider, what we are doing is creating an, a new authentication provider. This is coming from Kyota, the Azure AD SPFX authentication provider, passing that token provider and some other parameters like the uh, Azure AD application URI from Azure ID when you register the, the application. And uh, when you have the authentication provider, you create the fetch request adapter, passing that out provider. And finally, we create the Teamified API client. This object is the one created by uh, Kyoto, and we pass the, the adapter. Once we have the client, it's as simple as calling the client.teams, because our endpoint is, is teams, dot get. And when the promise is, is resolved, we get the, the list of teams, we pass to the React state, and uh, we render the, uh, the different teams using the Fluent UI uh, document component, as easy as, as, as it is. Let's take a quick look uh, to the code generated by, by Kyoto. So coming back to Visual Studio again, VS Code again. And if we take a look to the folder in here, client, uh, this is the code generated by Kyoto. We don't care that much, it's Kyoto's magic, uh, so we're good, but this is the main entry point that I already showed you in the, in the, in the previous slide. And well, this is the client, so you can see there's a request adapter in the constructor and this kind of things, all the different models uh, from the API, the channel, the team, and so on. And all this code is generated by Kyoto, so you don't need to do anything. It's already there, and for using, you just need three lines, three lines of code. Jumping back to the slides. As I said, the, the sample is already available in the repo, so have a look and let me know. By the way, the, the SPFS authentication provider is, is a contribution from, from myself to the Kyoto repository, so if there's any issue or whatever, please let me know. And there are some references on here, the official docs and the different GitHub repositories. And that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luis. Great demo and really interesting to see where Kyoto is now uh, nowadays and what, what you can do with Kyoto. Mm -hmm.